All right, we're gonna discuss the rear leaning rest, sometimes in yoga called a reverse downward dog. Yes. Um, so front leaning rest is this position. Shoulders over hands, glutes engaged, tummy tight. I'm pressing into the ground to try to get that rounded shoulder. And a rear leaning rest would be the opposing action. So the most interesting thing around this before I go into some positions of it and design for it, is that it actually is a retraction activity, right? So it looks like in a lot of cases you're pushing into the ground. So in categories within gymnastics, six two, I'm sure if you've kind of looked into that, there's a lot of pushing and pulling that actually go together as you move. But in this position here, I actually have to retract my shoulders as much as possible and keep my low trap engaged and active retraction on my shoulders in order to keep my shoulders from rotating forward, right? Because just think about that. If I was just, just to allow my shoulders to do what they wanted to do, this would probably be the most adaptive position for me, right? Because I can just rest on tendons. But what I'm actively trying to do, and I do have tighter internal rotation of my shoulders from posture and also just doing a lot of shit in front of me for a long period of time, is that I actually, in order to go from this position to that position, I have to actively retract my shoulders and push down into the ground so my mid upper back can activate in order to get in position. So you can see that that action itself for a rear leaning rest is something you wanna consider when you want to involve a hip extension or postural endurance activity with, with a retractive activity, right? Because ring rows can also look like that, right? Remember that, feet are on the ground, your heels are planted, you are actually pushing into the ground with your hips as you pull yourself up, this is a similar style of activity. So people can actually pattern the rear leaning rest like this, and you can classify it as a upper pulling and bending activity for what we know in our CCP language, okay? Why? Because I actually have to use my hips, hamstrings, gastroc, you know, through the heel, mid back, upper back, traps. I have to use all those muscles in order to keep my hips up off the ground. Now, you could probably understand that because I'm trying to focus on being as retracted in my shoulders as possible, it would be best in design to not have pulsing of this movement. Besides, it kind of looks funny. And you'd have to have some great music to go with it, and that's just too challenging for a program design. So you want shoulder blades down and back retracted. You can even see I'm starting to gain a little fatigue from doing it for that short period of time. I want my heels into the ground. I want to have what you're going to consider soft knees. So I'm gonna consider having soft knees just to make sure I have good activation of the entire posterior chain. But what I wanna focus on is rotating my hips from this uh, extended position in my low back to flexing them forward. I hope you can see that. So now I'm gonna push, push engage my hips up as high as I can without getting too extended through my mid back while keeping that retraction. And I wanna hold that position as best as I can. So you can see it's best in design if you were to do it like we do with front leaning rest for time and accumulation of time. So give the person a cue of when they start feeling a right to left deficit issue or the retraction starts to lose or they feel the length of their neck start to diminish where that means it's starting to work into an upper trap movement and go away from that retractive ability or when you can start to, they start to feel that they're losing that postural position that they're trying to uphold. So the same standards, just really in opposition for the front leaning rest, right? Big protraction, rounded shoulders, um, keeping the anterior core engaged, rear leaning rest, retracted shoulders, fingers facing back as much as we can. That's another mobility stability issue, but try your best to do that. But the real point of engagement should be where the shoulder is in space down as far as possible, retracted, and you can push into the ground, which is resulting in me retracting the shoulders, right? As opposed to when I'm here, I'm actively protracting to get that more rounded position um, in order to get my shoulder stabilizers to be affected in the front leaning rest. You should feel for most people um, a glute and hamstring engagement if they do that pelvis tilt correct. Um, if individuals feel it more so in their low back, so you ask them to actively create that hip extension. So again, fingers back, shoulders retracted as much as possible in an active position. I'm gonna raise my hips up and, and then you ask them to really focus on hip extension and they feel that they have some 
confusion or discomfort in their low back, you probably want to go back to a Thomas test, a split stance test, a side bridge, active single leg raise, or really a squat pattern, and you'll probably pick up that their, their hips are a little bit more tight on the front. So they may have a psoas hip flexor tightness on right to left side, because you can think about that. If I get into this pattern, right, I really am lengthening my hip flexors as I push my hips up, right? It's getting as long as possible. So just think about that. If I was on the ground right here, just watch this leg, what I'm, act what I'm trying to do is this movement. Right, I'm trying to get into that movement. So if you feel a big tightness in the front part of your thigh when you do this, in large cases, you need to take care of that client's anterior hip activation and mobility, not just stretching, activation and mobility to just try to, let's call it, set the pelvis right so that when they actively engage their glutes, everything's working together. So this is what happens in those people's brains when you tell these guys to activate effectively, it actually in pattern will tell these anterior hips to relax more, right? It's funny as it is, but humans will adapt to the length and tension that's required to get them to do the shit effectively. But if they actively try to use those muscles and their brain is like, no dude, you're way too tight here, you can do two options, right? You can actually activate these guys better or loosen them up, but you may need to focus on proper activation of the opposite side. And in a lot of cases, they can then get into position. So if they do have that discomfort, just bring them down a tiny bit more. At least they have some posterior chain engagement going on when they do it, okay? So that's the rear leaning rest in opposition to a front leaning rest. I should uh, comment that uh, some movements that you want to balance with this could probably be anterior core loading without the upper body. For a lot of people who this will work with to, I know it sounds like it might be a good idea, but to do front leaning rest and rear leaning rest back to back really gasses people's shoulders very quickly. So unless you have you know, in, you know, superior dominance in upper body pushing straight arm holds, then this could be quite a challenge for you. For those who are trying to go from press to handstand goals over time or planche lever progressions, this of course would be super easy for you to combine in other aerobic endeavors. But for a lot of folks, you want to pair this exercise with an anterior core activity without pushing involved with it, okay? That's the rear leaning rest, reverse downward dog, the opposite of an FLR. And I hope you can just think about those two points of retraction, upper back movement, along with hip extension, and just accumulate time with perfect reps, and uh, you'll help your clients out with that.